My brothers and sisters, many times we are given a task to do and we become worried about how we are going to fulfill the task, whether it is at home or at work or elsewhere. Something that is on our shoulders and we wonder how is this going to happen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us how to calm ourselves down, how to relax, how to be content while you are fulfilling this beautiful task. And what is this? If you look at Surah Taha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about a huge burden that he placed on the shoulders of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says between verses 25 and 28 of the same surah, قَالَ رَبِّ اشْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُ الْعُقُدَةً مِّن لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي Amazing verses. He said, O oh my Rabb, اشْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي Make clear for me my chest, which means make it easy for me. Make me strong, strengthen me. اشْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي Make easy this task for me. My task, make it easy for me. Wahlul uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. And untie the knot on my tongue so that they understand what I'm saying. He made this dua. We are taught we can repeat the same dua whenever we are tasked to do something. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri. Wahlul uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. Especially when you're asked to speak to people, when you're asked to say something, it is very important. You hand your affairs to Allah. You say a short prayer for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that Allah will help you. And you then be calm and relax. Allah will take care of things. So Musa alayhi salatu was salam was granted the dua. He was very calm, very relaxed. He was able to face the Pharaoh and ultimately succeed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us success. That's a very, very beautiful lesson. We have another lesson also to learn from Surah Taha regarding contentment. When we speak to people, we should always use soft words. Even when speaking to your enemies, use soft words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, to Musa alayhi salam and Harun. فَقُولَا لَهُ قَوْلَ اللَّيِّنَ لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى Both of you should say words that are soft to the Pharaoh. Perhaps he might be reminded. Perhaps he might be fearful of Allah. He might learn his lesson. If you are to be harsh, even with your enemies, Perhaps the enmity will become more and perhaps a war may begin where the losers, everyone loses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. So part of wisdom and part of achieving greater contentment even with your enemies around is to say words that are calm, filled with softness. Don't use hard words. My brothers and sisters, many of us are little pharaohs in our own homes where we use terrible words. Soften up, use soft words, use beautiful words, kind words. Swallow that anger of yours, you will achieve contentment. If Allah is telling Musa alayhi salam this regarding the pharaoh who was the worst of the time, none of us are better than the prophet Moses, may peace be upon him. And none of the people we would ever address can be worse than the Pharaoh who actually thought himself to be a God. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. And then we learn in verse number 72, a beautiful lesson regarding the magicians who were called by the Pharaoh. They were to be paid by the Pharaoh. They were to be compensated by the Pharaoh for their magic. When they saw the clear signs of Allah, they became so close to Allah because they surrendered to Allah, there was a calmness that overtook them. When you surrender to Allah, there will be a calmness that will overtake you. The, the Pharaoh immediately threatened them by telling them, I will kill you, I will execute you, I will punish you, I will torture you. You know what they told him? Listen to this verse, verse number 72 of the surah. فَقَضِ مَا أَنْتَ قَاضٍ إِنَّمَا تَقَضِي هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا 
ഇസ്ലാം they were magicians they had just accepted islam and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they were so content so calm when the pharaoh threatened them they said do what you want you can do what you like you can rule against us with whatever ruling you wish because you can only punish us in this world you can only make decisions regarding this world thereafter we are going to go to allah and we expect the forgiveness of allah the mercy of allah we have believed in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he can forgive our sins he will definitely forgive our sins and he will forgive what you have forced us to do and then they said you know whoever gets to allah calm with belief they will definitely uh, be granted paradise May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. These people prostrated for the sake of Allah just once. Thereafter, according to some narrations, they were executed. They didn't lose their contentment. They were happy. They knew that we're going back to Allah. Allah is going to be pleased with us. They were persecuted, but they were content. They were calm. One prostration earned them paradise. How many prostrations have we engaged in? May Allah accept from us. no whatever we've done for his sake i mean so my brothers and sisters we move on to more of surah taha where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of how forgiving he is he says in verse number 82 wa inni la ghaffarun liman taba wa amana wa amila salihan thumma tada indeed i am the most forgiving to those who seek forgiveness and then believe and then do good deeds they've changed their lives allah says for them i will continue to forgive such people may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to forgive us the major sins yes and the minor sins as well may allah help us to change our lives allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks also at the end of that surah verse number 132 about the importance of encouraging your family to fulfill the five daily prayers to fulfill salah not only is it an obligation upon you to fulfill the salah but it's an obligation upon you to encourage your family members to do the same many people lose out they leave their children they don't encourage them yes when a child is very little we don't say a word they should be following by example and they should be looking at us and wanting to do what we do even if they're 1 2 3 4 5 years old we haven't yet said anything to them when they get to 7 we can encourage them in a beautiful way with words by that time they will already have been following us anyway before the age of 7 they should have just followed we didn't tell them anything the telling only starts at the age of 7 and subhanallah use beautiful words if you were doing it happily every day they will follow you at the age of 10 you can apply a little bit more pressure upon them may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us in fact that hadith says that at the age of 10 you should separate the beddings of your children that's a very very interesting hadith where at the age of 10 you separate the beddings of your children may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us children and may those children be the coolness of our eyes amen we move on to surah al anbiya The next surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the prophets of Allah the struggles they went through what they what they were made to go through the persecutions and how calm they were how much they kept on calling out to Allah they did not lose hope how many of us lose hope in the mercy of Allah you lose hope you lose contentment you have hope you have contentment so be hopeful and Allah will grant you that contentment Ibrahim alayhi salam young boy was cast into a fire which was prepared by his own people his father was at the head of it imagine the father was prepared to throw his child into the fire and ultimately did simply because he told him worship your maker alone when we are upright and we want to worship our maker alone be prepared to be persecuted people might say bad things about you they might think that you're a bad person but 
keep going. Keep going for the sake of Allah. Be kind, prove them wrong. But don't lose your faith in your maker, never. Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, when they told him, we're going to cast you into the fire, what could he do? He was a young boy. He was still so content and he says, Hasbuna Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Indeed, Allah is sufficient for me. Allah is sufficient for me. And he is the best disposer of my affairs. Whatever he does shall be the best thing that could have been done. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at that juncture, we issued an instruction to the fire. That instruction is made mention of in, in verse number 69 of Surah Al-Anbiya, where Allah says, we told the fire, Ya naru kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. O fire, we want you to be cold. And we want you to be a means of peace, security for Ibrahim. We want you to be a means of peace for him. So as he was thrown into the fire, he was chained, he was tied. And guess what happened? The fire became cold. That was the dua. He was content. And the chains, the ropes that he was tied with, they had burnt in a way that he was now free. So after having tied him, he became free. What was supposed to be burnt was actually burnt. What was not supposed to be burnt, nothing touched Ibrahim alayhi salam. No harm, not at all. So this is Allah and the miracles that he shows us. The minimum that we have is the contentment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant every one of us goodness, contentment and happiness in this world and the next. Remember to rely on Allah. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.